Hi lovely artists, how are you today? How's your week been? Missing you guys all in the studio, it's so quiet without you. Today we're going to be doing a roll the dice artwork. Um, I think we've done some of these before in the past in person, um, but this will be the first one that you'll be doing all by yourselves. Um, so Today we're going to be looking at Keith Herring. Um, he's a pop, a pop artist and a street artist from around the 80s that he used to work. Um, so he was born in 1958 and he died in 1990. He lived and worked in New York um, and was predominantly a doodle artist essentially. Um, so he would create simple shapes um, simple figures, his bodies never had a face, they would, he just used the outline to explain that that's a person. Um, not all of his people were people either. Um, some of his people had heads like a dog or a wolf, um, some of them had symbols on them. He, he was super keen that to kind of portray an emotion and tell a story within one picture. So he created his own picture language, kind of like what you would see on the walls of a Egyptian pyramid. To show that his people were moving, he would put different types of lines around the outside of their figure, around the outside of the figure. So if the elbow was moving, he would draw a couple of lines around the elbow. If the person was speaking, he would have some straight lines showing that the voice is coming out. And of course, if the person was dancing, he'd put them in all different types of groovy poses. A lot of his works were very political because during this time there was a lot of stuff going on in the world. Um, there was lots of anxiety around war, religion and different diseases that were cropping up that people hadn't seen before and one of these was AIDS. Um, and so a lot of his work spoke about people's experiences and his experiences working within the street culture of America. Um, after a while, he decided that he wanted his art to be more accessible to people. So he started, he went from drawing on blank boards in the subways uh, with white chalk to starting to create prints um, he would sell them in a shop that he created, so he had a shop called The Pop Shop, um, and he would sell his artworks on paper, on canvas, on clothing, on shoes, you name it, he would put his artwork on it so that everybody, no matter what walk of life they came from, could enjoy it as well. So. No further ado, let's get into our art. First of all, I know this is backwards for you guys, I will, I will figure out how to make it not, but I found this roller dice chart, um, some of you may have seen it already in classes, um, it's by a lovely lady named Emily, um, and I'll put the link on it to pay, Teachers Pay Teachers, which is where I purchased it from originally. Um, and I'll pop a link for that in the description. So that's what we're going to be working with today. Okay, let's get started. For materials, all we need this week is a pencil, our paint, um, decide whatever colours you want. Uh, if you've only got the three primary colours like we do in class, I'll show you again how to mix our colours. You'll need your roller dice pitcher, a dice, a cloth and some water. So I'm going to put my paint aside for the moment. So I've got 
red, yellow, blue, white, and black. From these, I can make orange, I can make green with the, with the, green, with the blue and the yellow, and I can also make purple using blue and red. And then using white and yellow, I can darken and lighten the colors as I go. So I'm just gonna put those out, out of sight for a minute and we're going to work on our sketch. So this is what we're going to be painting. First of all, you need to decide which way you want your painting to be. Do you want it landscape or do you want landscape or portrait? So I'm going to use it sideways or in other words, landscape. I'm going to grab my pencil. Oops, got a bit of paint on there already. And I'm going to make my first roll. So my first roll is a head. So I've rolled number four and I've got this really cool head with a rectangle on it. And we can decide how many we want to do. So I think I might do two people today. So I'm going to make a circle. Pop some shoulders out and pop his visor in. And then I think I'll do another one here. Wonder what these people are going to be doing. Next, we're going to go on to roll two for our arms. Number one. Oh, it looks like they're going to be having a bit of fun, these guys. All right, so we're going to do we're going to work from the arm part because he's already got his shoulders up here. We're going to work just from here. So I'm going to make his arm come out on the first one, bend it down and around. Another circle, making some angles and we're going to give him a body. And then we'll make this one go up here. Now these guys look a bit like they're dancing. Don't worry, if you make a mistake, grab your eraser and as long as you're pressing nice and lightly, you'll be able to take away most of that lead. And on the other side, I think I'm going to flip it. So I'm going to do the angled arm this way and I'm going to put this one up like he's cheering. And I'm just going to put that one behind the other arm. Erase out the lines that I don't need and then a nice square for his body. Next, third roll is our legs. <gasps> Number four. Oh, they look like they might be jumping and cheering. This looks fun. So, we're going to do some angles, make some feet, make a bottom, bring that down and then we've got to make sure we put in his knees and his hips and we might do the same for this guy so what shapes can you see that I'm making everything is so we've made kind of a, di a, di a diamond here some more diamonds with some circles and then of course we put in the middle of his legs or her legs. Lastly we're going to roll our fourth roll which is an add-on. So we've got number six and we got hearts. Awesome! So I'm going to put on their shirts. I'm going to give them a shirt with a heart on it. Now, remember we spoke about how Keith Haring would use lines to create movement? Well, that's what we're going to add in now. I think I want this elbow to be moving, kind of like he's dancing. So I'm going to put some movement there. Pretty sure the knees will be moving. So we'll do some movements. And I reckon they might be punching the air. What do you reckon? And I think, I 
think we're going to roll again. Because I'd really like two add-ons in this one. A five. Oh, we got this cool circle. What can we do with that? I know it can be up here. It can be some speakers. For our dance party. Now I'm going to put some lines around it so it looks like it's pumping away really loud. Now don't forget you don't have to copy along with us you can do whatever you want. After we've got it all like we want it looking we're going to bring back our paint and for this one we only really need two paint brushes. We need a fat one and a thin one. Our thin one we're going to use to do the smaller bits, but it'll also mostly be used to do our background. So starting off, I'm going to make, I think I'm going to do a red person and a purple person. And I'm going to get rid of the lines that show where his shorts and that are because I want them wearing all one colour. So I'm going to get my, my red paint on my brush and I'm going to start painting this in. Now if your paints are a bit like mine and they're a bit thin, you might have to do a couple of coats. So don't worry. We will come and do that as it dries. And I really like using the square tip for the feet of my characters. It makes it super easy and is a bit of a cheat way of putting feet on. And I'm going to use the width of that again, that brush again to just make my arms, I think. That way they're all uniform. I don't have to do too much guessing. Alright, to make my purple I'm going to grab a paintbrush load of red, a paintbrush load of blue, I'm going to mix those two together. I want this to be a nice bright purple and so to create that brightness I'm also going to bring in some of the white. Now it's looking a bit too blue for me at the moment so I'm going to adjust by bringing in some more red. I'm going to keep bringing in red until I have the purple at the perfect colour. And I might also bring in some more white just to really lighten that up and make it pop. Yes, that's better. And I'm going to do that for this guy over here. Don't worry about if you cover up your heart and your visor will come back once the colours have dried. And paint over those.
Alrighty. So now I've got my people done, or at least the first layer, I'm going to wash my brush. Wipe it off on my cloth. And I'm going to get the background. For the background, I think I'm going to make it... I think I'm going to do a really nice neon green so that these people really stand out. So for that I need one lot of blue, not quite a whole paintbrush, then I want lots of yellow because I want this to be a super bright, bright lime green. Now I'm not going to be adding any white to this because I want the, I want the colour of this paint to be super bright. I don't want to water it down like we did with the purple because I want this lime green to really stand out. So I'm using a lot of yellow. And then I'm going to paint my background. Making sure not to go over my speakers because I'm going to do those yellow like the sun. And green we will probably have to do another coat on. If you get a bit of colour on your brush, don't panic. Just wash it off and keep going. And what I'm also going to do with this green is I'm also just going to paint around the edges of the canvas. So make sure you've got either a painting service. This is my paint table, so I don't mind getting paint on this. But if you're painting on mum's kitchen table, make sure you've got some newspaper or another rag down. Something that will just protect her, her table. So for my paint, I'm going to have to leave this to dry for a few minutes before I can come back and keep going. So I'm just going to finish this background, let it dry for a bit, and then we'll come back.
so we're back. I just put mine in front of a fan for a little bit just to dry it off. And my green is still really patchy. I'm not too happy with it. So I'm going to make some more. And if it's not quite the same color, that doesn't matter. Because we're going to go over the whole background again. Just because there's all these brush marks. I don't like being able to see that. And you can see almost immediately it's so much better with the second coat. Again, you might have to make your colours three or four times depending on how much you make at once. And just getting as close a match as you can, but it's not a it's no biggie if you can't. Just remember we're still all just beginning in our painting journey. Now I'm going to do the second layer on these guys and I'm going to add in my yellow for my circles or my speakers. So I should have done that before I did my green. And then I'm going to go back and go over my red dude. Because he's still patchy as well. Your reds, your yellows and your greens, depending on the paint you're using, maybe like mine where it just looks a bit patchy. That just means that the paint's a bit, a bit thin. Um, and you just do as many coats as you like until you get it, until you're happy with how it's looking. So it does take a bit longer to paint um, by doing lots of layers, but it does also give it a really nice professional finish if we just take that extra time. And I think I might also do my purple guy because there's some funny things happening on his body. worrying too much about the white gaps around it. If anything, that's kind of giving me a bit of buffer between the colours. Next I'm going to mix up some orange to go with my sons, my sons or my speakers, whatever they, whatever we decide that they are. 
And for that, I'm just going to grab some yellow, some red. And try not to get any green or, or purple mixed in, if you can. Might be a bit tricky though. And then I'm going to add that to the side of my, my speakers. And I'm also going to make up, I'm going to add some more white to this purple. Because I'm going to put in a heart in this purple here. Notice how the colour changes a bit. I love that. So using the same brush, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to continue to use that colour. Because I think it's so cool that they've taken on each other's colour. And then I'm going to do the same for their visor. So these guys might be soulmates, or they might be siblings, I'm really not sure, but they're having a fun dance party anyway. And I think they might be at a disco by the, by the colours we're using. And lastly, we're going to take our thin brush again, and we're just going to outline using the side of it. Just going to outline our figures. In fact, this one may still be a little bit too big. I think I'll go instead of using a square brush, which is what I've got here. I'm going to go over and I'm going to grab my size zero round brush yes that's easier to control now with the outlines this is when we also add in our lines of emotion our lines of movement and our lines of sound So once I've got this first guy done, I'm going to give him a square, relatively square feet. I quite like that look. Remember, we're not doing an exact copy of the Keith Herring. This is our own interpretation. And it's our own artwork based on his. What am I going to do? Here. Might have to let that dry a bit more. If you need to, you can also have a look on the internet and or if you if you got the canvases from us, I will have given you this awesome printout and you can see the different types of movement. So we've got some straight lines for barking or singing. We've got lots of movement, especially on this one. So you kind of see how to create movement using that type of thing. So I'm going to do some lines here. I think I might do some lines here. So I think you might be jumping definitely moving the elbow and I think he might be punching in the air as well so we'll do some some little ones like that do 
use some of those. Put his visor in. And just while I'm working on this side, I'm just going to go up and do this speaker. big lines and some little ones so you're always doing like a, a sun So anyway, you've got a change of colour. We just want to add in an outline just to separate those colours, kind of like you've got in a colouring in book. And then we can go over and just keep outlining and adding lines, movement lines as we go. There we have it. Our very own Keith Herring inspired.
piece. And you can go on and you can create as many as you like. All of them are going to be completely different. Some might end up being the same, but that's okay. You've got so you've got a few diff you've got lots of different options. And of course, don't forget to sign your work. So that everybody knows which one's yours. Have a great day. And I look forward to getting your pictures in a, through the email and through Facebook. I'm also on Instagram, so do everything that you need to do. Uh, like, subscribe. Um, and followed so that you keep up to date. Uh, we will post each week when the videos go live. This week's been a bit of a challenge. We've had some technical issues, but hopefully we're all back on track. See you guys.